Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, 19th of May. Indian court convicts Kashmiri separatist Yasin Malik in 2017 terror funding case. Afghanistan's Taliban mediates ceasefire between Pakistan TTP militant group. And Sri Lanka's fuel gas shortages set to ease, say Central Bank Governor. And now for all the details. While huge swath of India is grappling with the unprecedented heat, the northeast region is being devastated by floods and the southern region by heavy rainfall. In northeastern Assam state, more than 500,000 people have fled their homes to escape heavy floods triggered by pre-monsoon rains. Authorities warn the situation could worsen. The flood situation in India's northeastern Assam state remained grim on Thursday, with the number of affected increasing to 662,385 in 27 districts, according to official bulletin. The death toll also rose to nine, with one more person losing his life in Darang district. The worsening flood situation has driven people out of their homes as most buildings have submerged in flood waters. Locals in Nagaon district were seen seeking refuge in empty school buildings along with their families and belongings that they were able to save from the flood waters. अभी देख रहे हैं ये लोग पूरा समंदर जैसा दिख रहा है यहाँ का मौसम बहुत खराब है पूरा बारिश भी हो रहा है लगातार तीन चार दिन आ लोगों का बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है More than 500,000 people have fled their homes in Assam to escape heavy floods triggered by pre-monsoon rains. Authorities warned the situation could worsen. Heavy rainfall continued to lash southern Kerala and Karnataka on Thursday, disrupting normal lives in several areas of both the states. Indian Meteorological Department IMD has issued orange alert in 12 districts of Kerala. Meanwhile, Karnataka Chief Minister Basaviraj Bommai along with officials visited rain-affected areas in Bangalore city and announced compensation for houses that were damaged during the heavy rains. While deadly floods and rainfall slam northeast and southern India, much of the country bakes in a heat wave with maximum temperatures soaring above 45 degrees Celsius. The wrath of the heat is not only experienced by humans but it befell on animals too, prompting zoo authorities to make special arrangements to provide the animals sanctuary from the heat. According to the weather office, the maximum temperature is expected to rise from May 19 with heat wave conditions to worsen at isolated places of capital New Delhi. More than a billion people are at risk of heat-related impacts in the region. Scientists have warned, linking the early onset of an intense summer to climate change. An Indian court on Thursday convicted a top Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik in a 2017 terror funding case that carries a maximum sentence of the death penalty or life imprisonment. The arguments on the quantum of sentence will be heard on May 25th. A court in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday convicted Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik in a 2017 terror funding case for illegally raising funds, being a member of a terrorist organization, criminal conspiracy and sedition. The court directed the country's National Investigation Agency to assess financial situation of Malik, who was arrested in 2019 from Jammu and Kashmir, to determine the amount of fine to be imposed and posted the matter for arguments on quantum of sentence for May 25. The court had earlier said that Malik had set up an elaborate structure and mechanism across the world to raise funds for carrying out terrorist, 
and other unlawful activities in Jammu and Kashmir in the name of freedom struggle. India has long accused Pakistan supports militancy in Jammu and Kashmir. Islamabad, however, denies this, saying it only provides diplomatic and moral support to the Kashmiri people. Earlier on Thursday, Jammu and Kashmir police arrested four terrorists associated with Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba and one of their associates for involvement in a blast at a liquor shop in Baramulla district, which killed one civilian. Police also recovered a huge cache of arms from their possession. Defending its decision to ban wheat exports on the global stage, India on Wednesday voiced its concerns over global food insecurity amid an unjustified increase in food prices and cautioned the West that the issue should not go the way of COVID-19 vaccines at the highest level ministerial meeting on global food security call to action in New York. India's junior foreign minister V. Murli Dharan on Wednesday defended New Delhi's ban on wheat exports as necessary to address unjustified food prices and cautioned the West that the issue should not go the way of COVID-19 vaccines for which poor countries struggle to find while rich nations hoarded the doses. Speaking at the U.S.-led Food Security Ministerial Meeting at UN headquarters in New York on Wednesday, the minister emphasized that India will play its due role in advancing global food security and it will do so in a manner in which it upholds equity, displays compassion and promotes social justice. We are committed to ensuring that such adverse impact on food security is effectively mitigated and the vulnerable cushioned against sudden changes in the global market. In order to manage our own overall food security and support the needs of neighboring and other vulnerable developing countries, we have announced some measures regarding wheat exports on 13th May 2022. India has never been found wanting in helping countries in distress even in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic and ongoing conflicts, he reiterated. India, he said, was ready to consider requests for food grains from countries on a case-by-case -case basis, despite the wheat export ban. On May 13, India imposed a ban on wheat exports in a bid to control retail prices of wheat and wheat flour fueled by a shortage due to heat waves and the war in Ukraine. Moving on, Pakistan's new foreign minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday told U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken that his country prefers trade over aid as the two leaders met in New York on the sidelines of a UN summit. The meeting came as Pakistan looks to repair ties damaged by ousted Premier Imran Khan's harsh anti-U.S. rhetoric. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari told the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken that Pakistan prefers trade over aid as the two leaders met on Wednesday on the sidelines of a U.N. Global Food Security Summit in New York. The two sides reaffirmed shared desire for a strong and prosperous relationship and to expand cooperation on climate, trade and investment and security issues, Blinken said on Twitter. The meeting came as Pakistan looks to repair ties damaged by ousted Premier Imran Khan's harsh anti-US rhetoric and his unproven charges that Washington engineered his dismissal in a no-confidence vote in April. And I also look forward to the opportunity uh, to increasing engagement, engagement between uh, Pakistan and the United States, working uh, with yourself uh, and your administration uh, to impre improve uh, trade relations between Pakistan uh, and the United States and create opportunities uh, for American investors and Pakistani investors and Pakistani businessmen and American entrepreneurs to work together. At the Global Food Security Call to Action Ministerial Meet, Bilawal urged the UN member states to keep food and agriculture markets open and invest in climate-smart agriculture innovations. During his two-day visit, he also held separate bilateral meetings with the UN chief Antonio Guterres and his Maldivian and Turkish counterparts. Meanwhile, Pakistan on Wednesday opened long-delayed talks with the IMF International Monetary Fund to resume a US$6 billion US dollars rescue package to help shore up the country's battered economy. Reports suggested Finance Minister Mifta Ismail agreed 
Pakistan will have to take tough decisions, including rolling back unfounded subsidies to the oil and power sectors. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban in Afghanistan have mediated a temporary ceasefire until May 30th between Pakistan and Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan militant group, an official has confirmed. Pakistan has carried out a number of operations against the group, which pledges allegiance to Afghan Taliban, but has not been able to fully stop attacks. The Taliban in Afghanistan have mediated a temporary ceasefire between Pakistan and TTP, the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, a local militant group following talks between the two sides in Kabul, Taliban's spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid said on Twitter on Wednesday. A TTP statement also confirmed that talks were underway in Kabul and that a ceasefire has been put in place till May 30. It was, however, not clear who was representing Pakistan's government in the talks. The Pakistani Taliban, known as the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, has carried out some of the bloodiest attacks inside Pakistan since 2007. It is not directly affiliated with the Afghan Taliban, but pledges allegiance to them. Pakistan has carried out a number of operations against the TTP, but it has not been able to fully stop attacks, which in recent months have begun to rise again, along its western border. Islamabad says the TTP have been able to find safe haven in Afghanistan over the years, a charge both the Taliban and the previous US-backed governments have denied. Last year, the two sides had agreed to a ceasefire with Afghan Taliban's intervention, but talks failed due to a disagreement over the release of TTP prisoners held by Pakistan, local media reported. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Central Bank has secured foreign exchange to pay for fuel and cooking gas shipments that will ease crippling shortages, its governor P. Nandalal Veera Singhe said on Thursday. As Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe said, supplies had been locked in for at least a month. Veera Singhe told a news conference adequate dollars had been released to pay for fuel and cooking gas shipments, utilizing in part of 130 million US dollars received from the World Bank and remittances from Sri Lankans working overseas. This followed after the central bank held interest rates steady at a policy meeting, citing a massive 7 percentage point increase in April that it said was working its way through the system. The country was more politically and economically stable, Veera Singhe said, adding that he would stay on in his post. Sri Lanka is also officially now in default on its sovereign debt as a so-called grace period to make some already overdue bond interest payments expired on Wednesday. Veera Singhe said plans for a debt restructuring were almost finalized and he would be submitting a proposal to the cabinet soon. Moving on, tea producers and exporters in India have said that the ongoing economic crisis in Sri Lanka has come as an opportunity for the Indian tea industry to increase exports and grow business. Rampant inflation and inefficiency in importing fertilizers has been affecting tea production in Sri Lanka. Tea producers and exporters in Siliguri city of India's West Bengal state have said that the mounting economic crisis in Sri Lanka has given a tremendous opportunity to the Indian tea industry to increase exports. Tea production in Sri Lanka, one of the India's major competitors, has been impacted in recent months due to the ban of chemical fertilizer, which was later withdrawn, but soaring inflation has led to inefficiency in importing organic fertilizer thus affecting output. Indian tea exporters say the situation has come as blessing for them to grow their business. Now their export has become less, not the same, the distribution is going on. So our Indian tea, we export from the orthodox, Lanka also exports from the orthodox. So our export, the orthodox tea, will be very beneficial for them. Because Iran, Iraq, और ये तुर्की वगैरह जो भी चाय एक्सपोर्ट होती है सब ऑर्थोडॉक्स चाय होती है तो ऑर्थोडॉक्स चाय का मार्केट बहुत ही अच्छा रहेगा वेस्ट बंगाल एंड असम आर अमंग द लार्जेस्ट टी प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया विद हंड्रेड्स ऑफ वर्कर्स डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व इन द इंडस्ट्री 
Iran, Russia, US, Germany, UAE and UK are among the main tea export destinations of India. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.